Happy Easter. Again, on this sixth Sunday of the Easter season, my name is Tim Vanderhaar. As the senior minister of the First Congregational Church, United Church of Christ of Muskegon, I'm greeting you on behalf of these folks behind me. This picture of Christ reaching out is a mosaic made up of hundreds of little pictures, each block taken from the faces in a pictorial directory we made in 2009 for this congregation's 150th birthday. Of course, some of the members and friends who have come to us more recently are not in the picture. And there are some who are gone from our presence, but with us in spirit. But I love this visual reminder that the church is the body of Christ, and that consists not of a building or a place, but of people. We give thanks for the community of which we are a part, even when we are physically separated. As Psalm 118 says in a slightly different translation than we often use, on this day God has acted. Let us celebrate and rejoice. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed, alleluia. Please join with me in prayer. Ever living God, help us to celebrate this resurrection season and to express in our lives the love you have for us. May that kindle in us the kind of love for each other to which you call us again and again, and may it fill us with hope. This we ask in Jesus' name, amen. Today's reading comes from the first letter of Peter, chapter 3, verses 13 through 22. Now who will harm you if you are eager to do what is good? But even if you do suffer for doing what is right, you are blessed. Do not fear what they fear, and do not be intimidated, but in your hearts sanctify Christ as Lord. Always be ready to make your defense to anyone who demands from you an account of the hope that is in you. Yet do it with gentleness and reverence. Keep your conscience clear so that when you are maligned, those who abuse you for your good conduct in Christ may be put to shame. For it is better to suffer for doing good if suffering should be God's will than to suffer for doing evil. For Christ also suffered for sins, once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, in order to bring you to God. He was put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit, in which he also went and made a proclamation to the spirits in prison, who in former times did not obey, when God waited patiently in the days of Noah, during the building of the ark, in which a few, that is, eight people, were saved through water. 
and baptism, which this prefigured, now saves you, not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God with angels, authorities, and powers made subject to him. Here ends today's reading. My friends, I must admit that I've struggled a bit this week about what to say about this passage of Scripture. Now, on the one hand, there is a lot of different themes here that one could pursue. Uh, you could get sidetracked in a debate about the will of God in the flood and the extent to which those old stories tell us more about what people believed about God than they do about God. Or one could spend a great deal of time examining what maybe Peter meant when uh, we find that business about Jesus, who in the time between his death and resurrection, uh, as the passage said, uh, was made alive in the spirit and went and made proclamation. In some translations that says went and preached. The Greek word implies in the New Testament setting proclaimed the gospel to the spirits in prison who in former times did not obey. And how that might shape our thinking about limbo and purgatory and about eternal reward and punishment and the persistence of God's love in pursuing us even beyond the grave. And then there is that whole business of comparing and contrasting the waters of the flood with the water of baptism. How I would love to leap off from there and bore my Bible study class to tears. But uh, to be honest, maybe part of my struggle comes from being 
sufficiently sick and tired of both this new routine forced upon us by the pandemic and the uncertainty we face as we try to plan for an unknown future. Although in that regard, what else is new? We never know what the future holds. Oftentimes, we are just better able to hide from our ignorance. At any rate, I'm finding it more difficult than usual to focus on what is helpful rather than on my rage at those whom I perceive as the idiots who are making this whole thing more difficult than it needs to be. Today's passage begins. Now, who will harm you if you are eager to do what is good? The answer these days seems to be a lot of numbskulls out there. Perhaps that is why I need so badly to hear the words that come a couple of verses further along. Always be ready to make your defense to anyone who demands from you an account of the hope that is in you. That part is easy. I'm always raring to go, and nowadays more so than ever. It's the rest of the sentence that throws me. Yet do it with gentleness and reverence. <clears throat> Maybe that is the part I most need to hear from this passage right now. Gentleness and reverence. Reverence for God means respect for the image of God in the other. No matter how idiotic they may seem to me. Perhaps there is a need here to shift my perspective. Maybe that's the true lesson here. Not my perspective on what is true and right and helpful about the facts of the situation and what we ought to be doing about it, but my perspective on others who see it differently. Can I recognize them as God's children also? And say clearly what I need, believe needs to be said, uh, but to do it with gentleness and respect. I think it is in this sense that Peter is right when he says, even if you do suffer for doing what is right, you are blessed. Let me pause here to say that I feel a little bit like Tevye in Fiddler on the Roof when he says about being God's chosen people. Can you not choose someone else for a change? But the blessing comes, on the one hand, from the confidence we have in Jesus Christ, who, as the scripture goes on to say, has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God with angels and authorities and powers made subject to him. Whenever I read that, I think of some of the incredible mosaic domes that I saw touring around uh, Greece and other places uh, with Christ seated on the throne, holding the orb, wearing the crown, uh, Pantocrator, the almighty, the judge of all. Uh, do not fear what others fear. Do not be intimidated. Keep your conscience clear so that when you are maligned, those who abuse you for your good conduct in Christ may be put to shame. As the old saying goes, which may seem like just a clever quip, until we are in deep enough that we are desperate for something to hang on to, I do not know what the future holds, but I know who holds the future. Maybe now is a good time to remind ourselves of that in the name of God our Creator, Redeemer, and Sustainer. Amen.
We have two prayer requests from Eddie and Trina. Please keep Trina's mom, Mary Wall, in your prayers. She has been diagnosed with COVID-19. From Reverend Tim, Judy Pratt, the founder and driving force behind the lemonade stand across the street from the church, passed away on Monday after a lengthy battle with cancer. A memorial service will be scheduled for later in the summer. Prayers for her family, please. But also for the lemonade stand and the members there as they chart their course in days and months to come. Let's remember both of these concerns as we join together and lift up our hearts in prayer. Creator God, we give you thanks for this day and for the opportunities it gives us to learn, to grow, and to be your people in these times. There are many prayer concerns we bring before you. We pray for those who are sick and infected with COVID-19, including Mary Wall, and for those grieving the loss of loved ones, the family of Judy Pratt. May they feel your presence surrounding them. We pray for the vulnerable, the elderly, poor, homeless, and those with underlying conditions, as well as for those who are strong and young, that they may be inspired to have awareness of others not so blessed. We pray for our local, state, and federal leaders. Give them wisdom as they make weighty decisions that affect so, so many. We ask you to be with the medical professionals, caregivers, and researchers who daily work diligently selflessly on our behalf. Watch over them in their heroic work and be with all essential workers. We pray for those unemployed, for business owners and all under financial stress, for families coping with new ways of life, and for all those with mental health challenges. Many hearts are weeping during this pandemic. Breathe your peace and strength into our souls. God, we trust that you are good, that you love us with a love that will never let go. Teach us to be your faithful people, to have open hearts and minds that we may creatively seek to learn new ways of shining your light to others. Help us remember that the breeze of your grace is always blowing and guide us to set our sails to catch that breeze. Please join with me in the prayer that Christ taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. ...included an offertory invitation today, not just as a reminder of the obvious, that the Church still needs your financial gifts, and that you can contribute by email or electronically. Contact Elizabeth Major for details, even though we are not passing the offering plates. But more than that, to encourage you to reflect on the true meaning of an offertory. It is a symbol of our giving to God of our time and our talents and our love for one another, as well as our treasure. Let us contemplate that as we listen to a choral selection.
join with me in prayer. O oh God, in your goodness you have created us in your image and challenged us to be like you, creative and loving in all that we do. As we offer to you our willingness to do that, send your Spirit upon us, set us apart for that service, and empower us in it. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thank you everyone for joining us in this service. If it has been helpful to you, please share it with others. And don't forget, you can find some daily thoughts from me on our webpage, fccmuskegon.org. Go now in peace to love and serve the Lord. Let us sing on our way. Amen. Yeah.